The message is uh, today may be more of the meat of the Word of God, so you need to listen and hear what the Scripture has to say, and uh, I hope it will be a blessing to you. But as you find your place in Philippians chapter number 2, we'll go down to verse number 5 and read just a few verses of Scripture here for the message this morning. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 2 and verse number 5, the Bible says, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made him of no reputation and took up on him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Let us pray. Father, my prayer is on this day that you'd have your blessings on the reading of thy word. Lord, that you'd just have your blessings upon this message. I pray, Father God, that you'd just touch our hearts in a way, Lord, that we've not been touched lately. Father, I pray that you'd open up thy word to our hearts and our lives. And Father, we'll be so careful to give you praise and honor and glory for these things we do ask in thy home this sweet name. Amen and amen. I think you may be seated this morning. I would like to bring a message that God's kind of given me out of this passage of Scripture entitled, Obedience Unto Death. Can I say, first of all, I am grateful and I am thankful for what the Lord Jesus Christ was willing to do for my life and for your life as well. He was willing to step down out of the out of the portals of heaven. He was willing to step down off the throne. He was willing to take on the form of man according to our scripture. He was willing to go all the way to the cross for you and I. Folks, we have much to be thankful for this morning and be so much grateful for the fact that he was willing to be obedient, the Bible said, unto death. Uh, and he was also willing to be obedient even unto the cross. As you well know, the cross was not meant for any common person. It was not meant for someone of the caliber of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The, the, the cross was meant simply for those thieves and those, uh, uh, those murderers and those who committed such crimes that was worthy of going to a cross and dying on a cross. Uh, folks, I'm here to tell you what a blessing it is that our Lord and Savior, the Bible said he was obedient unto death. He was obedient even unto that cross. I am grateful today that he thought of you and he thought of me when he went to that cross. So we can say of this morning what a blessing it is from the text already that he was obedient. But I want you to just kind of give you a few things. I don't want to just leave you with all that. I want to give you some things this morning. Kind of give you a little educated thing here on, on Philippians if I may this morning. Please understand that the Apostle Paul, when he was in a prison in Rome, that he begins to write to the Christians of Philippi, of the church of Philippi, and he writes about four major things. One, he was writing, of course, on the Christian faith, but he wrote in chapter 1 on the Christian fellowship. In chapter number 2, we see he writes on Christian living. In chapter 3, he writes about Christian righteousness. And then in chapter 4, he, of course, writes on the Christian peace, folks. Ever. All four of those things are things that I believe that are very essential and very important for you and I as Christians to have. I believe that Christians ought to have fellowship. Amen. We're living in a day and a time, folks. We've got the world against us and a lot of things in this world against us. We ought to at least come together one one another and be in that one mind and one accord according to the scripture. Be in unity with one another and not have strife and discontent between one another as many do in this life in which we live in. But come together in fellowship in the Christian living. Uh, I believe it is very important and essential that we have uh, uh, our lives uh, uh, to where they represent Christ to the best of ability and then in, in our Christian righteousness, uh, which the Lord will and will see that tonight, uh, how important that is. And then, of course, the Christian peace. I know we all want peace. Uh, we all want to have the peace of God in our hearts, the peace of salvation, the peace between one another. Folks, if we can ever get there, what a true blessing it truly will be. 
But I'm here to tell you that Paul's goal uh, uh, throughout the text this morning uh, and that his goal was to be an encouragement uh, to those in whom he had ministered to in times past, even though the Apostle Paul's uh, situation uh, was not in the best state. He was in prison. He was in prison not for committing a crime, uh, but in prison uh, uh, for preaching the Word of God, uh, to, for being a leader uh, of, of a movement that they were not uh, agreeable with. Uh, so therefore we see his situation was not very good, but yet even in his downtime, even in his situation, he wanted to be a help to God's people. Folks, I want to be a help to you. Amen. I don't want to just come in here and just always rant and rave. Uh, I want to try to show you something from God's Word. I want to try to pull something from the text. Uh, I want to try to be an encouragement and help you so that you may know what steps in order you should take in your life that you can live a clear, clear and closer life for Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I say Paul wanted to be a help. Remember that Paul, uh, he was the kind of person that never wanted to put himself before others. He wanted to put other people before him for the ministry's sake. Uh, we know in 1 Corinthians, and we've read this before, in chapter 10 and verse 33, Paul said this, Even as I please uh, all men and all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, but they may be saved. So we see that Paul's goal was to reach out to the people, to be a blessing, to be, be an encouragement, to be a help, and to, for the most part, show them the way to Christ. Amen. Show them to salvation. I, I believe that every preacher, who, no matter who they are, uh, they may preach anywhere in the Word of God. They can preach on any subject, any thought. Uh, they can tell any story as long as somehow it leads men back to Christ, back to the cross. Uh, and that was his not only goal, but his objective here in our text. He said in verses 1 through number 4 in this chapter, he said, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, uh, if any bowels and mercy, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being in one accord and one of one mind, Folks, we see that that's what took place at the beginning whenever we get into Acts. Uh, the importance of being in that one mind, that one accord, that we all be in the same thing. He says, uh, he says here, let nothing be done uh, through strife or vainglory, but in loneliness uh, of mind, let each esteem another better than themselves. Look not, uh, look not every man on his own thing, but every man also on the things of others. Can I say that we see here this morning the very importance of it, uh, of, of, of being concerned for one another, uh, being uh, loving one another, being that one mind and one accord, uh, and being there for that encouragement like Paul was. Uh, we think about those in our church uh, that's going through some things, uh, those that are sick. Uh, so therefore, we pray for them uh, in hopes that God would help them. Uh, but sometimes we just want to do a very simple act uh, in wanting to help someone, being encouragement to someone. Uh, this week, we was asked to get a fruit basket together and get to Sherry's mom uh, with her being a member of the church, uh, with her being a part of this church, uh, and in her time period uh, where she's going through a valley, uh, she needed just a little bit of encouragement. Uh, you say, well, what kind of encouragement uh, can you get from a fruit basket? Listen, today, it does not matter what's in that basket. Uh, it does not matter what says the card, uh, but the thought that people cares enough to think about wanting to help one of their own, uh, and now we're wanting to help another in the church uh, that's been going through a valley uh, that some of you have already traveled. You know what they're going through. Just want to be a help to them and encouragement. Folks, we are living. We are living uh, the very precious word of God that I'm preaching about this morning by being an encouragement and a help one to another. But we see here that it comes from being obedient uh, unto God. So therefore, let me continue on to say this morning that we see here being in the same mind of each other and with Christ is the key to our 
Christian living. Uh, and if not a commu uh, in communion, we are not in a spirit in the spirit, but in the flesh. Amen. So therefore, I want to bring you back to the scripture of what I'm saying. The church uh, uh, cannot survive uh, in this world that we live in today without that communion, uh, without that spirit, uh, without that mindness in which Paul is trying to encourage us to be. Each loving one another, each committing to one another, each following the obedience as Christ was willing to be obedient unto death. We too ought to take on the obedience uh, of Christ uh, and be obedient to the church uh, and be obedient to one another so that we can show the love and encouragement to one another. I ask a simple question. Are you committed and obedient even unto death uh, when it comes to your faith this morning? Are you, are you committed to... Uh, are you obedient to, uh, to your faith when it comes to your salvation, to your church, and to one another? See, folks, the church, as we think of it, uh, we're not talking about this building. We're talking about one another. We're talking about being obedient as Christ was to us, that we be obedient to Christ uh, in the way to one another. And I tell you, that just blows my mind this morning. I mean, I've thought about it, and I've prayed about it, and I've sought God's will. But to think this morning what God is asking of us to do, that we would be willing to sacrifice ourselves, sacrifice our time, sacrifice our money, sacrifice our ability to come together for the purpose and the reason of being an encouragement to one another. It takes that obedience to the faith. In our context this morning, we have the lesson of humbleness. We have the lesson of humbleness from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Listen, he humbled himself in order for him to leave heaven and come down to this earth uh, and to take on the flesh of man uh, and become as you and I are today uh, and be willing to go through what he went through. Uh, he had to humble himself. Uh, not that he needed to be humbled, uh, but for the fact of showing that you and I must too uh, learn the facts of humbleness uh, so that we too can be accepted uh, unto God uh, as an example example, if you will, this morning uh, of how we need to be humble to Christ. Uh, Matthew 18 and verse 4 says, uh, Whosoever therefore shall humble himself uh, as this little child, uh, the same is great uh, in the kingdom of heaven. So he's saying uh, as an example this morning uh, that if you are willing to be as a child uh, to be humble and to be obedient, uh, be under submission uh, and, and understand uh, where you are with God uh, as a child would understand where they are with a parent uh, and be obedient to the words. Uh, and when they say it's time to get up, you get up. Uh, when God says it's time for you to go, you go. Uh, when God says it's time for you to do something, that you do something uh, it takes the humbleness of Christ in us we listen there is no need to overthink Christianity like some do today there's no need to try to rewrite the Bible uh, uh, as many has tried to do today folks we just need to believe uh, what God's word saying uh, and we need to commit that to our lives in the context Christ is not denying the fact. Uh, now listen, this is where it's going to get a little deep. Uh, but we understand that in our context that Christ uh, is, in, is not denying the fact that he is God in the flesh. Uh, but he, uh, he was in the form of God physically and as much spiritually. Again, he says who being in the form of God. Uh, he says here that whom uh, uh, being, being born, uh, in the form uh, of God. Uh, so we see here that uh, although that Jesus Christ was in the flesh, uh, he was as much of God uh, 
amen, as he was man. Glory to God, I tell you this morning, if we just get a hold of that, whenever he took on that flesh, you say, well, I don't understand where you're going, preacher. What I'm trying to get at this morning, as much as he took on the flesh of man, and he was God, when he came into you and I, folks, he didn't take on our flesh, but he took on us. And folks, as much as he is in us, and he is God, he is still God as he was on the throne. But now he's in us. He's took on another form. Glory to God. And it's through his spirit. Amen. I'm here to tell you that not only was he in the form of God physically, but he was also spiritually. I say we are not trying to to become a God. And I'm using a little G there. We are not becoming a God in the physical sense, but we are trying to represent God in our physical life and in our physical body and as well as in our spiritual sense as well. If we can us only understand in order to be obedient, in order to do that, we must humble ourselves and we must take on the the form of this body, the form of God, spiritually speaking, so that we can represent him in every area of our lives. I hate to tell you this morning, I hate to disappoint you, but you're never going to look like Christ. You're never going to look like God as long as we're here on this earth. But our spiritual lives through this physical body somehow, some way, ought to represent God through the Word of God with the Holy Spirit being within us. I, I try not to be of the equal in God when it comes to His perfect perfection or His divine power or His divinity of prominence, which is to be the the protector, a protective care. Uh, as God would be, or of the nature as a spiritual power. There's no way that I could ever become that uh, to even try to be something of that nature. Uh, my friend, to be equal with God uh, would be committing the same sin in which Satan himself did uh, many, many years ago uh, when he was in heaven and he tried to become uh, a God of his own. Uh, and because of that sin, uh, we understand that he was banished uh, uh, for ever uh, from the presence of God uh, in heaven. Uh, and someday, uh, someday he will be forever banished uh, from the presence of God uh, in the lake of fire. And all those uh, who believe like he does and tries to do what he does will be found for the same punishment this morning. Uh, so therefore, let us trust in God. We are, we are to, through his characteristics, I believe, uh, and through his very own qualities uh, and the qualities of God, spiritually speaking today, uh, uh, we, we uh, th ought to think it not robbery to be equal with God uh, as Christ did. Uh, again, he said, who being in the form of God uh, Thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Folks, I'm telling you, hey, listen, one of these days, uh, hey, when God takes us home, uh, we're going to be as God. Uh, we're going to have the same mind. Uh, we're going to have the same thought pattern. Uh, we're going to have the same body. Uh, we're not going to look like him, uh, uh, like some people want to try to tell you. But I'm here to tell you, spiritually thinking today and spiritually minded today, uh, we're going to be the equal of God when we get there. We ought to try to be as equal with God's character and God's quality while we're here on this earth. Amen. I think it is of great importance. I can't help to think about our writer this morning, the Apostle Paul. And you think here's a man sitting in prison. And here he is writing unto the church of Philippi. You would think that he would say, I'm sorry that I have found myself, I found, got myself into this situation that I am now landed in prison and I'm not worthy to be even called a man of God. Matter of fact, he called himself a prisoner and a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. But he could have wrote some letter of, of hoping that they would feel sorry for him. But yet, instead of him being that way, 
He writes to the church and he says, don't look at my life. Don't look at what I've done. You look at what Christ has done and you try your best to do like he did and be yourself as close to God, as equal to God in character and in, in quality as any way possible. He was encouraging them instead of giving them a self-pity party. Can I say this morning, oh, listen, we have a challenge that's set before us. First of all, I believe it's to be in, mind, one, be in the mind uh, which was also in Christ Jesus. If we could just somehow uh, take this fleshly mind of ours but it's corrupt and perverted uh, with the things of this world. Uh, every time we turn the TV on uh, or the internet on uh, or we open up the pages of a book, uh, we feel things in our minds uh, that is not of God, that is of the world. Uh, if we somehow, some way possible, can take, the, take that mind uh, and turn it over to God and let God take his word and fill our minds with his precious word so that we too may become uh, as a mind of Christ uh, when we think we think of lost people dying and going to hell and have the compassion for souls uh, that we want to run and tell them about Jesus Christ uh, and tell them how to get saved uh, that we'd have the mind of Christ uh, to the point in our lives glory to God uh, that we would want uh, that we'd want to please the Father in all that we do and all that we say and everywhere we go uh, that we just do all that we can uh, for the glory of God uh, oh I'm telling you today that we can just have the mind of Christ. Folks, I don't know about you. I don't, know, I don't even know where I'm at this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm about to leave this whole world, I'm telling you. I'm just trying to say this morning if we can just understand this thing that we got this challenge set before us, uh, that we'd have the mind of Christ, uh, that when we'd see uh, uh, someone poor and wretched uh, and undone and without, uh, that our hearts would break with that compassion, uh, that we want to go to them, uh, and that we want to help them, uh, that we want to give to them, uh, that we want to try to be a blessing to them uh, in some way, shape, or form. Oh, oh, I say, Corruption creeps in. Yeah. Whenever we see someone, we like, oh, I want to help that person. Oh, corruption creeps in and says, uh, oh, you don't want to help them? Well, they'll take your money. They'll run down to the beer store and they'll buy that alcoholic drink. Uh, or they'll run down here to the drug house and they'll get them some drugs. Uh, and they'll run down to the whorehouse uh, and they'll get them something going on. Uh, listen, you don't want to help that person. Uh, they'll abuse what you got. Uh, listen, the day that we tie strings uh, on the God's money, uh, there's something wrong with our hearts. Uh, we need to give uh, in the love of Christ in our hearts and minds, not caring what they do uh, and not expecting nothing in return, uh, but try to be a blessing. Amen. Amen. Someone told me one time, I was talking to a deacon in a church, not this church and not this deacon. And I was talking, I said something, I said, we ought to, we need to go down the road, we need to go visit these people. We need to go talk to them. That deacon said, preacher, it won't do no good. I said, why is that? I said, well, it don't do no good to go out and knock on doors. And he said, I don't want to listen to them lie to me. I said, what are you talking about? They said, because if I go down and say, will you come to church? They'll say, yeah, I'll come to church someday, and they'll never come to church. I don't want them to lie to it. Listen, folks, uh, you're going with the wrong heart and mind if you go that way. But in the mind of Christ, uh, you give them Jesus uh, and let Jesus do unto their heart as he chooses to do so. Uh, if you never see them at the house of God, if you never be able to tell them about Jesus again, just know that God is working on them. You planted the seed. God will take care of it. And someday, God will get to increase. Amen. I believe that this morning. I don't know where I'm going with this thing, but praise God, I'm going to Hey, Amen. I told someone one time, listen, don't get, at, don't get mad at me. Hey, I don't pull the plug on my rocky horse until the quarter runs out. Amen. I'm just going to ride this thing as much as I can, but thank God we'd have the mind of Christ that when we see somebody that's a, in, a, in a safe uh, uh, of need and a prayer. Why don't we die, bow a knee or bow a head and pray for them? I think it'll do a wonder in their lives if they know someone's praying for them. If we just have the mind of Christ. Not 
with our own reputation. Not so that people can look at us and say, well, look at how good of a Christian they are. Listen, it's not about me. It's not about you. It's not about us. It's not about what we are and what we can do. Hey, it's all about him. Jesus Christ could have made himself a reputation, but he chose not to do so for himself. He wanted others to see the Father through him. He said that he made him of no reputation. To, 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 and took upon him the form of a servant. Uh, he could have came uh, as a king of all kings, uh, riding a great gold chariot uh, out of heaven down to this earth. Uh, but he chose to take on the form of you and I and born of a virgin woman uh, in this earth, the same as you and I being born uh, of a woman. Uh, and when came the flesh as you and I were, lived as you and I did, went through the things that you and I did, uh, and then went to a cross uh, and died for you and I. Folks, he went further than you and I would have ever went. I said, he could have came as a king, but said, no, I'll come as a servant. Church, you're looking at a servant this morning in his pulpit. You're looking at a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, I understand in this world we live in, a lot of times people look, and it's amazing how they look. And, and what I was thinking about it the other day, uh, people look and say, well, how's your work going? What, what are you doing? And listen, I understand I have a trade uh, that I am a carpenter, but I'm here to tell you uh, that is not my passion. Uh, my passion is to be a preacher, a pastor, a man of God, uh, servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, and let nobody ever tell you no difference. Uh, listen, I might can do some things in this world, uh, and I might can, I can, might can make some things, uh, but one thing I'm more concerned about is, uh, is your soul uh, and your heart uh, and your spiritual life when it comes to the Lord Jesus Christ. And if I can do anything, uh, is to help you along the way. It's worth every mile. It's worth every way. We have a challenge to be humble in this world that we live in. Oh, I tell you, I see some, and I know they call themselves preachers. I see some that want to be put up on a pedestal of some sort. They want everybody to look up to them and say, oh, what a great man of God. Listen, whether you think of me of being anything less than great is fine. I'm just saying today, uh, folks, I am what I am by the grace of God, uh, and I don't care what other people think. Uh, listen, it does not matter to me if my name never gets written down uh, at the White House somewhere or put on a monument uh, or someone to put a plaque under my, um, underneath a statue and call it me. Uh, listen, that don't matter to me. What matters to me is that God knows uh, that I'm giving it all my I was talking yesterday to the Lord. I said, Lord, I said, you know, I want to give everything I got to this message without knowing and understanding, Lord, everything that I need to be saying uh, and what it is that I need to try to get across to my people. But God help me that when I'm done, that you can say, well done, child, and I want to please you. Oh, that's my heart. I said, we have a challenge. To be humble in this world, not high and mighty with a proud look, for those are the things in which God hates. Amen. That's what the scripture says. That's what the Bible says. But be, to be humble, to be humble, one of the greatest testimonies that you can ever have as a Christian, they're humble. They're humble. By the way, the worst testimony that you can ever have as a Christian is they're a compromiser. Amen. I want people to see me as a humble servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm willing to sacrifice. I'm willing to give up. I'm willing to do whatever I need to do just to get the gospel across. I say we have a challenge to be obedient even unto death as Christ was. Listen, folks. When you got saved, you should be in this thing for the long haul. Amen. There's nowhere along the way, as I can see in the Word of God, where you need to get off that train of salvation in a servant of Jesus Christ. I don't see any words throughout the Word of God that we need to step off and take a holiday 
that we need to step back and say, I've done my work. It's time for me to go. Listen, if God chooses one day for me to quit preaching, he'll have to take my voice from me. If he chooses for me to quit preaching, he'll have to take my help from me. I have in no mind and no shape or form of ever, ever quitting on God, nor do I ever have it in my mind to retire from God and serving him and preaching his word. So that ought to be a blessing to the church. You don't have to invest in a retirement fund. <laughs> Amen. I'm just saying today, I'll keep going as long as I can go. Many years ago, I was down in South Carolina in a meeting. Not in the meeting that I was just recently in, but I was in a meeting. And one of the preachers that got in the pulpit, uh, when he stood before the congregation to preach the word of God, uh, folks, I tell you, it was a great honor to be able to sit there and listen to this 101-year-old man get up and proclaim the word of God and to preach the word of God. Uh, folks, I'm here to tell you, he might have been a little slower than I am uh, because he's a lot older. Uh, he, it took him a little longer to get it out. Uh, but I tell you, it was the same message. Uh, my prayer is that God, uh, if he chooses not to if he chooses not to take me and he chooses to leave me here, uh, that when I'm 101, uh, that I'm still preaching to Miss Trula. Amen. Amen. <laughs> What that make her 102 or <laughs> glory to God. Amen. Can I go on and say, we have a challenge to be obedient unto death. I said to, to be endured this thing to the end. Our job's not done here, folks. We still got to learn a lot of work to do. Oh, I understand there comes a time you can't do what you used to. But you know what? We all still can pray. Amen. Amen. We all still can talk to the Lord. We all can still come to church. We all can still look in his word. If we got the word, we can't see it good, as good anymore. Listen, I tell you, we have modern technology. You can pull that little computer out of your pocket, and you can go to your Bible app. And if you like some of us, we got more than one Bible app. It's not the different version. It's the same version. Amen. Because you can get King James Version only, and you can get on there. And if you can't see it, you can enlarge it. And if you can't get it large enough, there's a button on there that looks like a little microphone. You hit that button, and they'll start reading it to you. I'm saying you can get a hold of the Word of God. Amen. We ain't too old that we can't get to God. I think I think on this thought, and I'm about done. What if Christ would have stopped short of the cross? He said, He said then, and then. Found in the fashion of men, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Look, even to the death of the cross. What if he would have said, okay, I'm going to go this far. That's it. I'm not going any further. I'm going to go, I'm going to go right up to the cross. But I am not going to lay my life down. I am not going to go through that. I am not going to do that. You're on your own, buddy. Folks, if he would have came short of the cross, you and I would have came short of the glory of God. We would have came short of salvation. We would have came short of going to God, of going to heaven. What I'm saying is today, he decided to go a little bit further. He said, I'm going on to the cross. And I'm going to lay my life down. And I'm going to give it up just so that you can have eternal life. What if Christ would have said, it's not worth it? How many times do we ourselves, we say, preacher, I just can't go and do it anymore. I can't go any longer. I can't keep this up. I'm not going any further. Listen, don't fall short. <laughs> Christ didn't. He didn't say it wasn't worth it. And what I'm saying is, as some, as some Christians that I know, they used to sing in the choir. They won't get up and sing no more. They used to get up and raise their arms and give a testimony and pray on Jesus. They don't do it anymore. I know those who used to stand behind the podium in the pulpits of God and preach the word of God, but now they're sitting somewhere with their head down, their head bowed, and it's not even the altar call, and they're, and, they're, and, they're, and they're not even willing to worship God. Oh, I heard one, I heard one just the other day made a statement of a preacher who messed up. I knew this preacher, knew him well, and I know he messed up. Listen, it happens in this world we live in. And all they tried to come up with all these things of what might have happened, 
And they began to run him in the ground. Listen, folks, I got up and walked off. I knew that preacher. Whenever all this took place, I walked up to this preacher in a restaurant. He was sitting there embarrassed. Man, he, he, was, he was afraid to even go out in public because of what people thought of him and said. I walked up to him and I knelt down on one knee in a restaurant. And leaned across that table and I said, Preacher, look at me. He looked over at me. He said, I know your face, but I don't know your name. I said, my name does not matter. I said, but you know me. And I said, you know me as a brother in Christ. I said, brother, you messed up and you know that. But God hadn't forgot about you. God hadn't quit loving you. God hadn't quit caring about you. I said, if you just lift your hands up toward God, don't worry about what man says. Don't worry about what man thinks. You just go ahead and let God love on you. And it'll be all right. Amen. Just hang in there, son. It'll be all right. Whenever he was at his lowest point, uh, he was sitting there crying. I was standing there crying. But, folks, I'm telling you, I was trying to be an encouragement and a helpmate. Why? I'm saying, uh, hey, listen, uh, that we was we was trying to do all we could to help him. But I want you to understand that people were uh, looking down on him. Uh, we ought to get over that and have the mind of Christ. Be humble. Be obedient. Amen. Uh, and uh, realize that they're worth it. Amen. I was told by a member of his family they had a family get together. Folks, this happened. This happened about four years ago. And they had a family get together about a month ago. They looked over at it and they said, why don't you lead us in prayer? The teary eyed that man bowed his head and said, thank you, God. Amen. And everybody in that household looked at him and said, wow. What a prayer. You said, well, why he should didn't say thank you for the food or anything. No, he just said, thank you, God. Why? Because somebody cared. Somebody forgave. Because someone loved. Now, you and I would just only understand that God was obedient. Christ was obedient. Bible says in 2 Timothy 3, 9, and I'm done, I'm going to close. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises. As some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us word. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. How obedient are you to your faith, to your Savior, to your church. To have our heads bowed, nice closed, sister, if you'll come to the piano this